Troy's that pumpkin too spooky? Yeah. Hello there, Internet! Troy to the Max Extreme here. Dinosaur Neil. And Dave Hunter Ghost. <laughs> and together, we are Imperious Rex. Troy, let me just say, it's uh, it's been a joy to have you with us this spooky season. Yeah. I know it's, it hasn't been easy for you. <laughs> no, my guts are in... Twined? <laughs> oh, Even with the gallbladder out. Yeah, there's more room for him to squirm around. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we'll make sure we'll keep that pumpkin facing forward Thank so you goodness. don't have to look into its hollow jack-o'-lantern eyes. <laughs> we do just want to call out real quick, we're doing a fundraiser all October long called Comics for Classrooms, mm -hmm. where we are asking folks to donate whatever they feel comfortable donating to the young minds of our local area graphic <laughs> design school where we're going to hand select some comics for them based on your generous donations mm -hmm. and uh deliver them at the end of the month That's right so it should be real fun the link is below mm -hmm. and we have a whole video about it if you want more information but uh we don't want to keep this we want to keep this stalled too much longer because uh the nerves are already uh, pretty high yeah i saw blue vans circling the oh the, uh, god the oh, neighborhood god. so we need to get moving <laughs> oh, oh. okay Everyone got their condoms on. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hand me one of them beers and let's get started. You got it. I just twist off. Nope. Mm. You can keep How trying. How no? How no? <laughs> So this is the second stop in our spooktacular Halloween-centric featured <laughs> episodes. I am still startled from the last episode, which you guys made me do. Oof, I was going to sit this whole month out. Oof. Oh. And you put a gun to my head, condom to my balls, <laughs> and <laughs> said, I'm going to shoot you or snap your balls. Uh, That's right. Oh, boy. And I said, well, I need one of them. <laughs> so I guess I'll be here. <laughs> well, luckily, this one, you know, not quite as spooky as the last one, I'd say. Well, uh, guys, I'm easily spooked. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So sync, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. This, as we've said, has been a long time coming because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you remember way back when our early years of Imperius Rex, we did a little Halloween special where we chatted about some of uh, my favorite horror reads. I think mm -hmm. you just kind of glazed over and nodded a bit. Probably <laughs> put did. yourself in a safer place. <laughs> mostly what I'm doing right now. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I brought up how much I enjoyed the book, and then Emily was gone, mm -hmm. which was the first thing I read from author John Lees. And there it is. See how spooky that is. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Sorry. Third to last time I'll do that. <laughs> And John Lees, the author, um, a Glaswegian, I yeah. believe is the term. Yeah. He's Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> he was so kind, he didn't know that we weren't a real show, and he even <laughs> chatted with us a little bit about it. <laughs> so there's an early interview. If you want to look back like four or five years, see how we've all changed over the last apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he gave us a lowdown on this book, and then he said, I've got a new one coming out pretty soon called Sync. And I was like, oh, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Turns out, one of my favorite horror books I've ever read. Oh, boy. Not saying a lot, Dave. That is. Yeah. You see all these books? Scary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I come in here and I'm just them. overcome with depression <laughs> oh, and crippling no. anxiety. <laughs> and those are the real fears. That's right. <laughs> those are real terrors out there. So if you asked me for a top five horror Halloween recommendation reading list... I'd just say sink five times. <laughs> Whoa! Holy smokes. That's high right. marks. There is a lot to digest here. Mm -hmm. a, a bunch of different little stories you could probably put in your top five. Mm. That's yeah. very true. Mm -hmm. That's so, very true. So what is sink, Troy? Okay. You just read it. I did just read it. Did uh, you? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have checked this before we started rolling. Sink is a seemingly collection of shorts that all take place in the... Glasgow area. Sink Hill. In Sink Hill specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you first kind of get a glimpse on what the universe is about in the first issue, which I read when it came out. And uh, I was like, wow, this has got something, uh, first of all, very spooky about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it's also very graphic. Mm -hmm, like, yeah. Uh, in its violence specifically. That's right. Alex Cormack does the artwork on this. And it's and very it, much hand-in-hand hand with the writing yeah. style. Yes. <laughs> Making yeah. you feel at a bit of unease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's 
pretty much my feeling through the whole book is that you're sitting at this weird thing of unease. Because seemingly, if something's good, oh. Oh, it is going to be flipped very quickly <laughs> into a horrific tale of horror and tales. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That is actually one of my favorite things about these little series is, is that you don't know whether it is going to turn out good. Some turn out better than others, but yeah. sometimes you don't know how awful things could actually get. <laughs> yes, I, I feel like that is a very good description because there's a lot of stories in this where something bad happens and you're like, oh my god, that's awful. Well, I'm glad that's over. And then you're thinking like, I mean, how could it get any worse than that? And then it gets tremendously worse. <laughs> And the fact that all of these are standalone stories, mm -hmm. they do uh, make up a larger universe that you start to pick out as it goes on over the two volumes, but you could just pick up any one of them yep. and oh, read yeah. it cover to cover and be good. Yep. Yeah, I would say the, the loose threads that they place in all the other books that kind of connect everything, like, they're just loose enough to make them so they're not crucial to the next one yeah yeah there are reoccurring characters some of which you are happy to see <laughs> oh, yes. one in particular i think who's kind of the face of the sink property who i think is just a tremendous character oh yes <laughs> so the very first issue gives you the best encapsulation to the entire series it's mm -hmm. called welcome to glasgow mm -hmm. and it's about this kind of out of towner who goes down to sink hill to hit up the bars and then go back to like his cushier city right mm -hmm. and he's like yeah i'm one of you guys yeah this is what we do and when he's left behind by the bus and he has to walk on foot back to his home through the pit that is sink hill he has a very awkward reminder <laughs> that he is not one of them yeah yeah yet <laughs> right <laughs> oh yeah yeah sure and on his journey he just comes across a lot of characters that we see pop up again there is a gang of thugs called the Dickheads yep. who wear jumpsuits and condoms pulled over their head, <laughs> which uh, we're going to have to call bullshit on that. Yeah, it's, it's a fine. physical impossibility yeah. unless you're buying horse condoms. <laughs> <sighs> These will not fit on my head. Will they? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, just... oh, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. Ah! pregnant. John, I don't know how you expect this to actually happen. <laughs> I'm like the penguin. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my hands. Yeah, we're all gonna wash our hands. Look at that bag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, here, well, I want to save it. So, just when our main character thinks he's met his end mm -hmm. by these young dickheads, he is <laughs> saved by a mask-wearing vigilante brandishing a shovel <laughs> named Mr. Dig, mm -hmm. and he is like the face. He's like the anti-hero of the Sink universe, and yeah. he just kind of pops in here yeah. and there, and he speaks in very broken English, a bit of a Rorschachian character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a fox mask. Yeah. And my word, does he deliver beatdowns <laughs> across the earth. Yeah, yes. he'll shovel you across good. the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Lays waste, salts the earth after. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love how this first book, like, it it kind of, it sets that tone that, like, yeah, anti-hero is right. Like, he will kill a motherfucker <laughs> real quick, and he's got the craziest eyes in this first <laughs> oh, issue. Yeah, he does. Some of the kills with his shovel, he only uses a shovel, mm -hmm. Mr. Dig, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and he expanded my mind on what you can do with a shovel. <laughs> yes. Some of these, I was like, my lord. He didn't dig one hole. He didn't dig think. one hole. <laughs> Dug a lot of graves. Oh, boy. <laughs> Figuratively, of course. Yeah. You no know, holes were dug. <laughs> he sends the kid on his way. He's like, get out of here. Get out of sync. You don't belong. Yeah. And the kid takes off. He's like, oh my god, thank god. We're done. I'm, I'm out of here. And then when you think he's safe, this blue van full of clowns shows up. And this is another reoccurring, like, urban myth of the area. Yeah. That deranged clowns driving around in blue vans abduct people. And then, like... On a lot of other books, that would have been the end, right? They, mm -hmm. yeah. they just scoop him up. This takes it like a little step forward. They pull him into the van, and then they show what they do to him. And they basically just hack him up with razor blades, stick, like, nail a clown nose onto his nose, yeah. and then, like, give him laughing gas to put him out as they turn him into one of them. So mm -hmm. now you actually do see that character among the other clowns later on. Those clowns are terrifying. Yeah. Because... They don't talk to you. They aren't telling you. They All they do is laugh maniacally. Yeah, they're not a Joker ripoff or no, anything. No. It is just 
um, they're like zombies almost. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're turning you into them, yeah. pretty much. Just and it's, eating the shit out of you. Yeah, so. and you think, like, <laughs> yeah, that's a tough thing to do a unique spin on, like Killer Clowns. Like, mm -hmm. we've seen it. You know, Pennywise, yeah. all that. Like, but these are such a different take on killer creepy clowns. Yeah. What I think most of the horror spurs off of, too, it's like, this is like real life abduction and shit like that. Yeah, it, there's no super supernatural at all. In no, this. and that's what makes it so uneasy that you could just like walk outside in a bad part of town mm -hmm. and you'll get turned into a clown or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, You're no a clown thanks. now. No. <laughs> So, before we get into some of our other favorite uh, stories in this, I mm -hmm. just wanted to take a chance because it is Halloween season, of course, and uh, I've come with treats. Oh my. As you God. know, I have a predilection <laughs> for sweet tart skull and bones. <laughs> I found out via their Instagram when I uh, tagged them that they have discontinued them. I responded with, then I've discontinued living. <laughs> <laughs> Which received no response. <laughs> so, in just a blind fit, I scoured the internet, found a bag on Amazon, and purchased... Could be my last The last skull and remaining bones. skull and bones. <laughs> yep. Oh, these are delightful. Oh, they're so much better than regular... Mm. Regular like, shaped sweet no, tarts. Eating bones is fun. <laughs> mm. You know what would make this even better? Blood. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too scary. <laughs> So we set the stage. What are some of your other favorite one-offs over the course of this 10-issue run? Which, I should mention, as I swallow that last bit of sugar, <laughs> uh, there is a third volume coming soon. That's excellent to hear. It's hard to say which ones are better than others. There's some that have a really great message. The one, there's issue three, I believe, mm -hmm. dealing with um, like a, a trans woman. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is just spectacular. Who used to be the toughest bloke on the block. Yeah. <laughs> just a mad dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feared by everybody. Hands just mangled from glassing so many yeah. people. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Just so great. Like, a family comes to him looking like, hey, you knew this person. Some asshole down at a bar. Killed my father. Killed him. Yeah. yeah. Killed, killed my father. And he's like, I heard you were the toughest guy around. And he's like, guy. <laughs> I'm no guy anymore. Like, so, like, he's fully embraced the transition and was like, I'm a woman now. I don't do, like, I'm, I'm not doing any part of this. And I found peace. I've yeah. given up that lifestyle. Exactly. Because all it did was lead to pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I'm living my best life over here. Mm -hmm. But boy, did they make make her feel guilty, I guess, because <laughs> she went down to that bar and cracked so many skulls. <laughs> it was just great. And, and then, like, pumps in a red dress, like, just went down there. And just beat those fuckers silly. <laughs> <laughs> she delivers, like, the best line. Are you not all tired of being bigoted, hateful <laughs> I've got tired. We're all busy fuming over bullshit differences that we can't see what we have in common. Like... It's so good. Like, just screaming that at people. Covered in blood. Just covered in blood. Yeah. Troy, what about you? Did you so... Get, did you get this far? I did. <laughs> Is issue three? <laughs> um... Man, another one that stuck out. Because of all I'm... Can I... Can I... You can step in. All right. You can step in. <laughs> Let me just say that one of my favorite comic moments in recent years was a reveal that happens in the only two-parter of this oh, series. Oh, yes. yeah, my yeah. God, yeah. So there's a two-parter called Graphite Green that involves this mm -hmm. awful, like, housing development area that they just evict everyone from and destroy. And then this rich benefactor creates this wonderful, like, palatio housing complex called Graphite Green and invites all of the people that were evicted there. They're like, yeah, we're, we're going to take care of you. We want to, like, we want to bring in people from outside, so we want to show how good it is here, and we're going to make sure everyone's just living in luxury because mm -hmm. you've had a hard life, and we're going to take care of you from now on. Mm -hmm. And this family, this Middle Eastern family, the father, is very suspicious of this. But his family's like, no, we just, we got to embrace it. You know, we're going to accept their kindness. And they go in, they start living in this just really creepy looking place. It's got these awful twisted statues outside that I thought were From really second unique. second one, that should have been a big yeah. tip off. Like, yeah. this doesn't feel comfortable at all. <laughs> but it has a game room. Oh yeah, it does. It looks pretty good. It'll it be open both. to the public. That's right. <laughs> they meet all the neighbors. There's a couple faces. They're like, oh, 
maybe they're hiding something. Maybe something's up here. Mm -hmm. The father, he's a cab driver out at nights, and he's just always like, what is going on here? Yeah. I don't trust anyone as far yeah. as I can throw him. A former Iraqi military. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. <laughs> know how I get shit done. <laughs> yes. Well, they're not there too long before the father is like, okay, this something is rotten in Denmark. We're getting out of here. They go to leave. All of a sudden, the building goes into lockdown. A couple of these creepy tenants start putting on their war paint, and it turns out it's almost like a hostile situation yeah. where people tune in and watch these butchers just mutilate everyone in the apartment. And the father and his family need to get out. And it Oof. almost goes into full, like, the raid. Yeah, mode yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's a mix of a couple really great properties. <laughs> yes. And the the mom is like, oh, my God, wait, what are we going to do? We're going to die. And he's like, no, we're not going to die. He pulls out this duffel bag that he's been carrying <laughs> around, unzips it pulls out the shovel and the fox mask. <laughs> yes. And we see, holy shit, this has been Mr. Dig the whole time. He's just got a family, a wife and kids here. Yeah. Yep. And they just picked the worst motherfucker <laughs> to lock in that building oh with God. them. And that is where the first issue ends. And I remember reading that and being like, oh my God, I, I have never been so invested in a book as I am right now. Yeah. So then the next issue, he is just going floor to floor, getting his family out of there and just hacking through these murderers. Mm -hmm. And eventually, like, they, they get out and um, they kind of take over the building yeah. and say, like, this is where broken people can live now. We're taking yeah. it over. We're killing all your butchers. And this is, like, a, a asylum now for people right. that need yeah. help. I like that other, like, one of his across-the-hall neighbors uh, is, like, apprehensive to go with him at first. And he's like, but I'm not you. I'm not wearing a mask or whatever. It's like, I'm nobody. I'm just a guy wearing a mask or whatever. And then later that comes back where the whole rest of the complex dons like makeshift fox masks. They all like oh. have little cutout masks that <laughs> yeah. they wear. Yeah, just kind of unites the whole like the, They all come down and they just take it to this weird man in a room benefactor. <laughs> and they literally just beat him to death. <laughs> yeah. They burn him alive. They hang him yeah, and burn him alive outside. And I assume they just leave him there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Someone would walk by and just think it's a, one of the statues. <laughs> just, just it statues. doesn't look worse than what's already here. Yeah. So you you both read this for the first time. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction at that reveal? Did you see it coming at all? Right uh, a couple of pages before, I'm just like... I think this is probably Mr. Dig. Mm. And then it was Mr. Dig, but it still made me feel oh. good. It was a complete surprise to me because, again, I didn't think the interconnectedness was going to be that deep in this issue. So when I saw that, I was like, God, he's getting him out alive. I know it. <laughs> yeah. The only reason I put it together, because I realized Mr. Dig's a beefy dude. Oh, yeah. and this guy's a beefy dude. And I'm like... Could they be the same beef again? <laughs> Is it the same beef? Was same level shuffle? of beef? <laughs> yeah. And it was. Nice. Yep. Another uh, issue that I really liked is one that's almost completely silent. It's another clown oh, issue. Yeah. Yep. And it's the clowns trying to capture a woman. Oh, it and opens just... with her in the midst of being clowned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and it goes through her eyes. She wakes up in the middle of it. Yeah. And uh, she, it's pretty much just a whole chase scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the entire thing. But there's hardly any dialogue in it whatsoever. I think it's just like sound effects yeah, yeah. and like and screams. Ha -ha yeah. yeah yeah she doesn't show up later again does she she shows up at that building at the, the end does the, she at graphite okay Green. she shows up in the van is yeah. like oh maybe i can stay here <laughs> maybe i mean she doesn't talk <laughs> just brutal though yeah. brutal oh. like she like staples like the cuts that they oh, put in her God. face shut yeah she like has Horn to rip her nose off because yes. like, the nose is like Clamping it's like clamps on. onto your face, and it's yeah. just on there until you rip your nose. It's off. essentially a clown nose bear trap. Yeah. God. She, uh, as one of the clowns is attacking her, she grabs the stapler that has, that she stapled her mouth shut, and staples him in the eyeball <laughs> yeah. to get him yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is so violent. Very much well. so. <laughs> yes. But also like stylized enough that it isn't like off-putting, at least to me. I feel uh, the art. It, it, it reminds me a little of Ryan Otley. A little bit. I think it's a little ugly. Dirtier. Uh, dirtier. Yeah. Uh, uglier is not the right word. It's a little dirtier. So sometimes when the violence is like hyper intense, it is still kind of like obscured. stylized enough mm -hmm. and obscured that it's not just like, 
a realistic depiction yeah. of a staple in a man's eye. It's yeah. like yep. a flash of red and it's covered in white streaks for rain and all that. Yeah. So. I would say with Otley stuff, you can clearly tell when someone's <laughs> got their large intestine and small intestine <laughs> out. It's pretty detailed. Whereas yeah. like this obscures it all, but I think that's for the best. And yeah. that's like it keeps it gritty and gross. Yeah. And that's not saying I don't like the art either. I really like the mm -hmm. art a lot. A couple other standouts. I really like the issue Young Team, which was oh about the God, group yeah. of school I children. I had so much anxiety during yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's essentially, it's almost like his take on Stephen King's The Body mm. or yeah. um, Stand By Me. Yep. Yeah. Like this group of school children that are going and looking for their missing classmate who they think was taken by clowns. Mm -hmm. So they're like, we're going to go clown hunting. And they just go off into like the worst part of Sink Hill to try to find their friend. Yeah. So they're wandering around looking for their friend. And when they go to the speakeasy, they bring up a character who I think has one of the best names. It's old Jaggy Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Which has the Scottish slang. It's Jaggy Balls, well, but yeah, they just call yeah. him Jaggy Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Old Jaggy Balls said he'd be around here. <laughs> and they're wandering around and they end up stumbling on Mr. Dig just giving somebody the business there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what would you say? It's almost like a rite of passage type of moment between the two where he kind of offers them the opportunity to off finish off this drug dealer. Kind of, in a dark way, he's trying to like kind of scare him straight. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I would say. And he's like, yeah. all right, go ahead, kill the guy. Turn into a real piece of shit. Yeah. I'm here because I'm a piece of shit. You don't have to be a piece of shit. You could be in school right yeah. now. Yeah. I'm Mr. Dig, piece of shit, beating the shit out of this guy with a shovel. He's all hog-tied upside down. Yeah. You want to be me? The kids are like, oh, kind of? I, I still kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> I want to mention this one. It's It wasn't... It was a good one, but it just goes to show the cruelty of Sink Hill, pretty much. Yeah. It's when one of the dickheads, it's a story oh. revolving around him. Oh, yeah. And he yeah. kind of, he, like, wants to be part of the gang. He wants to be, like, he wants to get, like, initiated into the upper echelons of it. And, like, but he's he, going to age out. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. <laughs> like, you reach a certain point in your life, if you don't turn 30 and you haven't filmed yourself doing something Some horrible yeah. to somebody like Some you go through like the, the lead yeah. balloon they call it and uh so he's like trying to prove himself and and do all this but and he's just too nice a guy yeah he's he has all like, these opportunities to do awful things to yeah. people and get in and, and then he helps a nice it. lady across the street yeah. like he just <laughs> he's conflicted about what he, he wants to be a part of something but he also doesn't want to be a just a shit bag you dickhead. know yeah, yeah he doesn't <laughs> want to be a dickhead <laughs> when he does realize that this lifestyle isn't for him. He's just going to accept the repercussions of the lead balloon, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. He goes and talks to the head person, who mm -hmm. I believe is Cy McCurdy, mm -hmm. yeah. who's kind of like the kingpin of St. Hill. Yeah. Right. And Cy, like, sees him, and he's like, oh, so you weren't tough enough. You weren't mean enough to be part of the gang, huh? And he's like, okay. Basically says, like, you're free. Then just get out of here. Yeah. So Cy is almost like, he's got this gang of thugs, but he puts this in place so that good people can get out of here. Because he knows Sink Hill is going to wreck them. Mm -hmm. So if somebody can't own up to these awful challenges, mm -hmm. then he's like, good, leave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're a good person. Get out of this town. Yeah. So the guy goes and then he sees uh, another reoccurring thing. A bus, a bloody bus full of people <laughs> that look like they're being butchered inside. <laughs> yeah. And he's ready to leave town. And he sees it and he's like, oh my God, I got to help them goes into the bus we finally see what's going on in there and it's like this trap all these bodies are in there but he walks in to try to help somebody and gets impaled on something and he's killed yeah, yeah. so it's another one of those where it's like oh my god this was almost an uplifting story yeah. of like someone being able to get yeah. out of here and do good yeah and it's just like nope man this fucking town yeah <laughs> i do love the interesting take on the cy mccurdy guy because there's another issue where he does help he is legitimately a nice ish guy yeah. but like who <laughs> runs a dog fighting he ring he runs a dog fighting <laughs> ring but it's like and the girl the, the main character in that issue is looking for her dog yeah. which was just eaten in the yeah. dog ring <laughs> yeah like he's got he some gives her a new stuff. dog it, yeah it's like, a terrible dog that he doesn't want to take care of <laughs> he's got this weird nice thing about him though where he does allow people to leave if it's they're like not. a level of understanding yeah, yeah. i would say it. he's nice <laughs> that's a good <laughs> way to put it he keeps saying yeah. nice and i'm like <laughs> ah that's not right <laughs> yeah yeah, it is. It is. Level of understanding is perfect. Yeah, and he looks a lot like Grant Morrison too. 
Sp I was going to say Spider Jerusalem, but same. I pretty much shotgunned trades one and two. Mm -hmm. Yep. And by the time I got to that uh, issue, I was so downtrodden <laughs> by just having a horrible ending after horrible ending. And I was looking forward to this point, having like, we've seen a lot of shit go down and he just kind of leaves. And it doesn't happen. I'm like, is this what's going to be like in every single issue? Because like, I... It's making me feel bad. <laughs> Physically, it's taking a toll on me. But in trade two, the last three, I would say the last two issues, yeah. have a more of a uplifting ending, mm -hmm. which I'm like, yep. okay, not every single one of these issues is the same. Yeah. Not that they are the same, but makes you feel the same at the end. Right? Yeah. I need like something that's not just going to keep Mr. Digging me into a hole. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so that brings, let's just hit up the, the last one yeah. in the volume, and it's Bedbug, and it's about um, this couple that met on a dating app, and they're both like mid-30s, you know, they're kind of been out of the game, and they're they're going to try their, their hand at love, mm -hmm. or at least a good night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get there, and they're just kind of like fumbling their way through this kind of dominatrix type of scenario. <laughs> yeah. Where they're like, ah, we, we've never really done this before. Let's right. give it a shot. Yeah. And they're just run into all these gaffes and goofs along the way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, yeah, right. like, it's a really <laughs> funny experience. Gaffes and goofs. It is <laughs> yeah. kind of humorous. Eventually, they, as the, the man is tied to the bed, they're interrupted, and a gang of dickheads storms into the house. They mm -hmm. trick the woman and they're gonna like film an initiation there where they're gonna like rape her and wreck the place. Mm -hmm. And uh, the two of them end up getting the upper hand on these thugs. And it just goes into this marvelous beatdown of <laughs> yeah. all these yeah. just asshole dickhead yeah. punks. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty ironic that the dickheads get beat up with a large dick. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Ever. <laughs> and the one, the one at the end, it just gets it like rammed. <laughs> all the way down swallowed. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, my favorite moment in this one is when they're like fighting people and they go back to back and then gently hold hands behind <laughs> yeah. each other. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also the titular bed bug, which is this gigantic buzzing anal toy <laughs> that has a reoccurring role throughout. And a pretty great payoff there with the clowns as well. Oh, that yeah. would split you. That'd spatchcock the shit. Right oh, my boy would. There's no way. There's no way, John. Yeah. Have you looked below your waist, John? Your know. sizing metrics are out of this world. Well, maybe that's it. He's across the pond, so it is metric. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Yeah. So I guess that kind of wraps up Sync. I'm so happy that we finally did it on the mm -hmm. show. It's mm -hmm. been a favorite of mine for yeah. quite some time. And I know I've mentioned it a lot, but I just really wanted to give it its due. Yeah. Mm because -hmm. I think uh, if if you like horror comics or even just like good creative, well, I mean, you gotta like horror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll start there. <laughs> but this is a good one, and it might be something that a lot of people have slept on. And you need to you need to check it out if this is your bag. Mm -hmm. I will read anything John puts out. He actually just announced a uh, a follow up to his book from AWA uh, Hotel mm -hmm. Hotel with another L, so it kind of says hell. If you block out some letters, <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it on the screen. It'll make more sense. <laughs> He's got a second volume of that coming out, and he also has the Crimson Cage, which is a New Orleans retelling of Macbeth through the lens of professional wrestling. Oh, Oof. also it, John Lee's avid professional wrestling fan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as I mentioned, I uh, had a chance to chat with him again recently. With volume one, you know, we were playing a lot and kind of like, you know, like little like plays and riffs on familiar tropes. This time we've got to go right out there with a couple of the ideas. So I'm really excited to see what folk think. I think we managed to talk the first volume. So I'm really excited to see where, you know, like what the reaction is. If you are not signed up for his newsletter or his patron, they're separate, but you can contribute, obviously, because the guy deserves it. Mm -hmm. He did a top 100 greatest comic runs of all time recently, and I got to chat with him on that, and he has some amazing recommendations there. So if you're looking for, like, the best thing to read, look no further, because mm -hmm. there's a hundred amazing titles on there. Yeah. What do, what do we all think, everybody? This is stop two. It's spooky season. <laughs> Troy, are you going to make it for stop three? As long as that pumpkin doesn't turn around. <laughs> oh. I can't promise what he's going to do. <laughs> oh, God.
I leave him to his own devices. Be thankful that the plug doesn't reach any outlets. If that baby was plugged in, woo, be a whole other story. <laughs> oh, oh my yes. god. So that's going to do it for Sync, our second stop on this blue bus ride around town. So what do you think of Sync? Have you read it before? Have you checked out other John Leese works? Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, if you would like to join our Patreon, you are more than welcome to because with a generous donation from yourself you get access to our discord as well as a variety of other perks that our patreon provides yes uh but until next time i've been short of the max extreme dinosaur neil ghost hunter dave and we've been imperious rex and we'll see you next time bye bye boo <laughs> ah! <laughs> love can say that <laughs> Which one's bigger? Which one's a lot of hair? <laughs> Which ones are less gross? I don't know if there is an answer to that. That's how this works. It's gonna be so fucking gross. All right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do we put? Which on? one's the slimy side? Here we go. I think I found it. I'm good and slimy right now. <sighs> These will not fit on my head. Really? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, oh, 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 oh no! <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work. Ah! Pregnant, John. I don't know how you expect this to actually happen. <laughs> I'm like the penguin. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my hands. Yeah, we're all gonna wash our hands. Look at that bag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, all right, here. Well, I want to save it.